So my name is Stephen Kasky, and I'm a Thermal Systems Research Engineer here at AirSquared. So the NERC2E project started with a phase one effort that was awarded to AirSquared. NASA is very much trying to push the frontier of human exploration missions, so trying to push humans deeper into space to be able to support those humans in these long duration missions. Currently, food is only able to be stored uh, in space for one to three years at room temperature, and that's how all the astronauts eat on the ISS. The focus was to develop an oil-free refrigeration system to help support large food storage systems in space. So what AirScore does is we're in the business of developing oil-free compressors. Uh, we've been doing this for the last 30 years and really have been applying this for mainly compressed air applications. We can use those in automotive industry, medical industry, aerospace. In the last five years, we've been expanding these oil-free applications to refrigeration technologies and have now been able to provide additional benefits to refrigeration systems by able to run oil-free compressors and now the whole cycle can be oil-free. Why is this a great design? An oil-free compressor is very compact, small, runs efficiently without the need for oil, and really provides a lot of design flexibility in the system. How are we able to achieve an oil-free compressor? By removing the oil with it, our advanced manufacturing techniques, we have to run the scrolls tighter. We have smaller clearances so we can overcome the added leakage that usually comes with the absence of oil. Also, we have directly grease bearings that no longer need oil directly supplied through the working fluid. How does oil-free compressors provide opportunity for future space missions? We can actually make a reality of landing a human on Mars, which is a very exciting idea to think that we could push the frontier where humans are able to explore in space and go to the far reaches beyond what anybody could imagine. The people involved in this project was Purdue University, Whirlpool Corporation, our funding came from NASA uh, Johnson Space Center and the NASA Flight Opportunities Office. The roles of uh, Whirlpool Corporation on the project were to support the design and development of the complete refrigeration cabinet as well as some of the supporting equipment like evaporator, heat exchangers, some of the capacity sizing. Purdue University provided a lot of extra testing capabilities to investigate liquid flooding, also help provide design expertise and feedback on the refrigeration layout and NASA's Johnson Space Center was the direct technical advisor to provide overarching guidance on the execution of all of our tasks to align to the objectives. The design of the refrigeration system really starts with the compressor. With our experience of other NASA projects developing flight qualified hardware, it was really an exciting opportunity to get another crack at developing a very small, compact, oil-free scroll for this space refrigerator application. So as part of the data acquisition development, there needs to be a lot of troubleshooting, verification of wires, are things uh, being read properly by the computer? Are there any signals coming in that we don't quite understand because they weren't set up properly? There's a lot of debugging and verification steps that go in to make sure that not only is the data acquisition system built to the right uh, level of sensors, pass-throughs, connections, is it getting us the right data that we need? And the design of that DAC box is just as critical as the production of that unit that we're going to be testing so we can collect those measurements. To be able to conduct four parabolic flights is a very large and challenging effort. AirSquared has not encountered anything like this before. To do a parabolic flight requires a whole host of preparation work. That is a very nerve-wracking feeling to imagine that I could have something on the plane and it could be a big paperweight. It doesn't turn on, doesn't provide a cold cabinet, and the whole flight is now worthless in the sense of not getting us the data that we need. After takeoff, we're in flight, you're thinking about all this culmination of effort. So many different individuals, so much time spent, nine months of development leading up to this very pivotal moment. We're going through Hyper-G. You're very concerned and waiting for that pull to happen where you make the transition to Micro-G. What is it going to feel like? Are you going to be able to acclimate to the environment? Is the system going to be responding in a way that you expect it to? Are you going to have the capacity in that understanding of that different and strange exposure to be able to recognize what's happening in the system? Can you make strong technical decisions while feeling this once in a lifetime experience of floating? Overall, this project was a monumental a testament to the team effort that was required to achieve 
down from a technician level to a test engineer to all the other partners of the project. How did the units perform? They performed brilliantly. I mean, I could not have uh, anticipated such a successful result. The compressor was running fine, smoothly. We were able to maintain a cold cabinet, which is the utmost goal and important goal of this entire effort. The compressor was able to push through on challenges that we would normally anticipate happening to no uh, avail. The compressor pushed through and ran continuously. All of that was able to be achieved. So across four days of flights, it was very exciting that our flight plan that we developed, we were able to meet and actually go above and beyond and iterate on that in flight based off the results we were seeing. That oil-free scroll, its oil-free operation is very robust to a normal failure mode where liquid comes into the compressor. With the completion of these successful parabolic flights, this allows us to push the technology readiness level of oil-free compression. The next steps for this are for long duration microgravity testing, something that goes beyond what we can do here on Earth with the unique testing environment of parabolic flight. Really, we're seeking to go to the International Space Station in a way to be able to vet this technology and kind of wrap up very nicely that it's a very suitable and reliable oil-free compression for space applications.